Brother, please, yeah? Don't judge him, yeah? Don't judge him. I haven't even started the video yet. Look, look, brother, please, yeah? Don't judge him, yeah? Who are you, brother? Who are you? You're right. Who am I? But I haven't started the video, bro. It, it seems like you're judging me. What? Uh, that, that, is that my phone ringing? Hello? What? What? I, I don't hear anything. Uh, I, I gotta take this call. Hello, mom. How are you? Sorry, can you give me a minute, please? Harris J was a famous musical nasheed artist. He won a competition and was signed by Mahir Zain's label at around 12 years old. He had a very innocent religious image till he did a Hannah Montana Miley Cyrus flip, which confused and angered a lot of his fans. He did a very honest interview with Adam Saleh and Slim, which we can learn so much from. Asalaamu Alaikum guys and welcome to another episode of Smile to Jannah. Smile to Jannah. <laughs> Alright guys, so as people we are becoming so quick to condemn people without asking why or delving a little deeper. Knock, knock, knock. Hello, is the real Dr. Cox in there? And that's the main reason that our relationships, our families and friendships are falling apart. What a depressing way to start a video, right? And just like any other good or bad thing that happens in our life, there are always reasons why. And not practicing the religion or leaving the religion is not exempt from this. You know what? Let's see how youth have it today, yeah? First of all, we're surrounded by concrete, plastic and iron. We breathe polluted air, eat fake and processed foods. We're addicted to social media which gives us a dopamine release like drugs, validates us, gives us an escape and in return makes us entertainment junkies and narcissists who constantly compare themselves to others leading us to being miserable. I really hope this video cheers up here yeah, because I'm getting depressed just by being in it. And we got games, movies and music which have billion dollar budgets and Harvard and Oxford professors that are competing for our attention. You know what, that actually makes me feel quite important and a little bit worried. And if that's not all, the first 10 years of our lives which are the most vital when it comes to upbringing, our parents are too busy at work, on the phone, cooking or watching dramas. So we're left at the mercy of the colonized curriculum and the television. And that's like employing Satan to be your babysitter just because he's cheap. And that's not to mention our two hours a day madrasa or weekend madrasa if even that's stretching it. Which we have of course reserved for the most important thing in our life, Islam. Where we read the Quran in Arabic after a long day at school and have a teacher that most likely we can't relate with. So it's after all of this upbringing of ours, we adorn the hijab. If you're a girl, yeah, I, I have to make that clear because we've got morons that watch some of these videos to be honest. And go to school or are on the internet and have to defend our religion from people who want Islam's head on a stick. When all these kids want to do is fit in with the image that they've grown up watching on television. Now bearing all this in mind, let's rejoin Harris J. At the vital years of his life, he was going through some stuff at home, yeah? At the time, like I said, I was going through a lot of bad things like personally and, and it, like a lot of negativity was, like, was in my life and I was really, really unhappy with a, with a lot of things that were happening. Now this clearly wasn't resolved and then he won the competition. It was like, it all happened, like I said, it all happened so fast. Like I won that competition I, just as I was turning 16 and I was just wow. finished, I was just finishing high school and then, and then they basically just offered me like this, this big contract. And because of that, he started touring, you know, doing all these nasheeds and receiving so much adoration for it. But naturally from a small age, he didn't have that connection with the religion. So he admits himself. When I was younger and I was signed and I was signed to Awaken and I was doing traveling, I was going to Malaysia, Indonesia, and I just released my album. 
I was not praying, bro. Like I was not, I was not, I was so out of touch with my dean because there was, I was so, that I was just going through so much crap and I felt so distant from God. And the fact that he was doing some crazy stuff, but still maintaining a practicing image just for the sake of his label. There would be times, yeah, where I would be like, I'd like I got arrested and then from the police station, I'd have to fly to the airport and go and do like a concert in like Malaysia and just smile and pretend like my whole life was happy and sing about like the Prophet and Allah. Yes, to people, it seemed like he was on the Islamic side. And then he went to the dark side. And naturally, they were cheesed off. Bro, I swear to God, in real life, people was calling me Dajjal. But to himself, he knew he wasn't really about that life anyway. But Dajjal? Really guys? I don't think Dajjal's gonna be entering singing competitions when he comes and graces us with his presence. Now of course we all have our journey and we make our mistakes. And it does make sense Islamically and even logically that when we are making these mistakes we don't make them publicly yeah. We don't we don't show them off to the people like it's some sort of thing to be proud of yeah. Oh I'm just showing people that you know it's okay to be a human being and you do these things. Hey people already know this yeah we got plenty of other examples. Harris J mashallah he's an intelligent boy you know what I'm saying. He was plunged into that test when he was young and you know still a bit confused but now mashallah he seems to be finding out more about himself and becoming more in touch with his religion. The one thing that I'm most sure of on, in this world yeah on my life that I'm most sure of on this world is that you can't be happy without God. You can't you can't be happy without God. If I've learned anything in my in my years of living that's that's the one thing so no matter no matter what I sing about and no matter what I kind of do in my life or the, or the music I make or the places I'm in and stuff like I will never that will never leave my brain. And he still feels that he wants to pursue music and that's up to him you know what I'm saying. What I do want to give him props for is that he is not justifying his acts in the religion of Islam and that is very important. Some people do wrong things yeah and yeah you can say that's a human thing to do but to then justify it within Islam no. No, 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 you can't, you, you can't be doing that. Now guys, I really do want to say that it's important that we help our young and also our elders as well to experience the religion rather than making it just about the acts. A very good example of this is we ask our kids if they've prayed, but we never ask them how they felt or what they experienced. Yet from a small age, if you ask them questions like this, it gets them thinking as well. And that's not to mention from a small age we tell our kids Don't do this otherwise Allah will get angry with you. And we tend to only mention Allah is watching them when they're doing stuff wrong. I mean we've got the balance so wrong. Just look at the 99 attributes of Allah. Only a couple of those attributes are about punishment. Pretty much the rest of them are about love, compassion, mercy. How comes we get the ratio wrong? when we're advising other people, when we're upbringing our own children. So yeah guys, don't make people your role models other than the Prophet Sallallahu or the people who have passed away yeah because all of their life is documented in front of you. But somebody that's alive, they could be one way today and then they may join the dark side <coughs> down the line. And let's get a bit psychological on this because some people look for role models because something or someone was missing when they were young and they are now projecting that on other people which well it's unfair on other people because you're expecting a pristine and perfect image. Of course like I mentioned we have a lot to do to help our youth but let's just start with nurturing them from a young age by giving them your time. Time is very important for young kids. Being firm but fair with them and not just using Islam to scare them. And when they grow up don't use the same tactics as you do when they're young. When they grow up you gotta let them make their mistakes and be more understanding and don't leave their side. Don't tell them to get out, don't tell them that they're not part of the family anymore, any of that business for God's sake please. And more importantly when you do make mistakes turn to Allah 
and ask forgiveness for Allah will never leave your sight. Alright guys, let's leave it there for now. Until next time. Assalamu alaikum.